Last night at 10pm UK time, which is apparently a civilised hour over there in America, Intel held an event called Accelerated, which was a follow-up to their IDM 2.0 event a few months ago. Accelerated was hosted by, among others, Pat Gelsinger, the boss of Intel. With that, let's go through some live Q&A. I'm excited to be here in the studio today with Anne, Sanjay, and Bobak, and we'll be happy to take questions. So, operator, how about a reminder of how folks can ask questions and then send us the first one. Now, in fairness to Intel, the event itself went pretty blooming well. It wasn't until the end when they opened up to Q&A that uh, Mr. Gelsing was rather left hanging by some part of the system. Once they had revisited the IDM 2.0, they went over three further topics, node naming, process innovations, and packaging innovations. Node naming, apparently it's a problem. According to Intel and many other people they've spoken to, Intel is currently on 10 nanometer, just about, and they're working on 7 nanometer, but TSMC and Samsung are on 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer and 8 nanometer, which are smaller nanometers than Intel's nanometers, and therefore it sounds as though Intel's behind the times. So the fact that Intel's 10 nanometer is something like equivalent to TSMC's 7 nanometer, this is problematic. What they need to do is to rename their nodes. The thing is, this topic came up a few months ago when an Oregon newspaper got wind of this. And at the time, the thought went around of, is this a good idea for Intel to rename their nodes? And many of us thought, no, it wasn't. Anywho, Intel is determined to press ahead. We have the current 10 nanometer, and then we're gonna have Intel 7, Intel 4, Intel 3, and Intel 20A. And no, that's not 20 amp. The A refers to angstrom, which is 0.1 nanometer, so 20A alludes to 2 nanometer, but they're not actually saying 20 angstrom, they're saying 20A, but they're saying angstrom. The current process is 10 nanometer superfin, that is in high volume production in Oregon, Arizona, and Israel. And then we have what would have been 10 nanometer enhanced superfin, which is now gonna be called Intel 7, obviously alluding to seven nanometer, even though it isn't. And here we're looking at a 10 to 15% improvement in transistor performance per watt, i.e. not absolute extra performance by sticking in more power, but extra performance per watt, extra efficiency. This process was already on the roadmap, it's just changed name. And we're gonna see Intel 7 in Alder Lake, which is due practically any day now, and also Sapphire Rapids. After that, we have a seven nanometer process that's gonna be called Intel 4, and this is where we start to lose our minds and just refer to the Intel number, and not so much what it is behind the scenes. Intel 4 is going to be used in Meteor Lake on the client desktop and Granite Rapids in the data center. Meteor Lake, they're talking about the compute tile on Intel 4, i.e. chiplets, and taped in in Q2 2021. Obviously what we're looking for next is tape out. Intel tells us that Intel 4 will be their first node to fully embrace extreme EUV lithography. Hang on to that thought for a second. So ASML, clearly significant company, they're the fellows who are supplying EUV equipment to TSMC at present and to Intel. Uh, there's one company in the world doing this equipment. It is ASML in the Netherlands, which essentially is a consortium of companies across the entire industry. Then we move on to Intel 3, which will be manufacturing in the second half of 2023. And if you look down at the notes below, so they're looking at 18% improvement in transistor performance per watt. And among other things, they're saying there'll be increased use of EUV. So how Intel 3 compares to Intel 4 in respect of EUV, we're not entirely clear, but clearly EUV is a critical technology. And then we move on to 20A, which is kind of two nanometer sort of. We're now in the first half of 2024, and it's now worth looking at Intel's processes from the 8088 chip in 1979 right the way up to Ice Lake in 2020. If you take a slice of that and look at the more recent processes from 90 nanometer all the way up to 20A in the future, 
you can see that the PAR stretches out and then Intel's hoping to collapse the 10 nanometers Intel 7, Intel 4, Intel 3 and Intel 20A into a remarkably short period of time. The snag of course is that we are being told about Intel's next major architecture Ice Lake on 10 nanometer absolutely years ago and it took a terribly long time to arrive. So the fact that Intel's telling us about their various process innovations, strain silicon, high K metal gate, the first FinFET, now SuperFin, they've done those things in the past, but the most recent advances took a terribly long time to arrive. It's very hard to believe that Intel's current roadmap is anything more than hopes and expectations. Clearly, if Intel can deliver on this new roadmap, absolutely brilliant. But recent history makes us skeptical. That roadmap looks ambitious. Now 10 nanometer we understand, 7 is a half node, 4 full node, 3 is that a full node or a half node, then we get 20A. So Intel's getting some hustle on here. 20A where they change their naming from nanometers to this new metric is clearly something new. And Intel does indeed have some new technologies that they're actually talking about in some detail here. So I'm going to unleash a few minutes of Intel's presentation and let some doctors from Intel talk turkey. Starting with Dr. Ann Kelleher. Intel 20A will be another watershed moment in process technology when we introduce it in the first half of 2024. It will feature two groundbreaking technologies an entirely new transistor architecture named RibbonFET, a first-of-its-kind innovation called PowerVIA to improve power delivery. Here to tell you more about both of these amazing technologies is Dr. Sanjay Natarajan. Sanjay leads the team developing our future process technologies. Sanjay. Thanks, Anne. I am pumped to take the wraps off two innovations that I believe will transform silicon process technology as we continue to push the boundaries of physics. The first is our new backside power delivery network called PowerVIA. This is a unique technology developed by Intel engineers and will make its debut in Intel 20A. Traditional interconnect technology connects on top of the transistor layer. With the resulting intermixing of power and signal wires, routing inefficiencies arise, hampering both performance and power. Our solution is a novel process where the power wires are placed underneath the transistor layer on the back side of the wafer. By eliminating the need for power routing on the front side of the wafer, more resources become available to optimize signal routing and reduce delay. This also enables better power delivery by reducing droop and lowering noise. This allows us to optimize for performance, power, and area depending on the product needs. We have been perfecting this process over the last several years, and PowerVIA will be an industry-first deployment of a backside power delivery network. As we look to productize this innovation, our defect density, performance, and reliability give us confidence that it will be ready to ramp into production. In fact, we expect to test PowerVIA on earlier nodes to ensure this groundbreaking technology is fully ready before it ramps in volume with Intel 20A in 2024. These test chip and SEM images show the structure of our PowerVIA here. We can't wait to get PowerVIA into customer products so that they can reap the benefits. And there are even more innovations to come. Intel 20A will also introduce our first new transistor architecture since we pioneered FinFETs in 2011, Gate All Around Transistors. Gate All Around has been in development across the industry for several years, and the name comes from the transistor architecture. Wrapping the gate, Completely around the channel means better control and a higher drive current at all voltages. This delivers faster transistor switching speeds, which ultimately translate to higher performance products. And by stacking multiple channels, called nano ribbons, we can achieve the same drive current as multiple fins, but in a smaller footprint. Our implementation of nano ribbons enables the width of the ribbons to be modulated to accommodate multiple applications. We call our version ribbon fit. These test chip and SEM images show the architecture of our ribbon FET. Based on test chip measurements, we expect our ribbon FET transistors to deliver performance and density improvement beyond today's FinFET transistors. The introduction of Intel 20A with PowerVIA and ribbon FET highlight Intel's innovation leadership. 
beyond Intel 20A, Intel 18A is already in development for early 2025 with refinements to RibbonFET that will deliver another major jump in transistor performance, along with clear process performance leadership. But you're gonna to have to wait a little longer to hear more about that. Because predictability is critically important to our customers, we have put a concerted focus on schedule predictability throughout our development process. This frees Intel's innovation engine to lead in high differentiation areas, such as PowerVIA and RibbonFET. I am truly proud of the team and can't wait for our customers to realize the incredible benefits of products built using these technologies. Intel went on to talk about packaging technologies such as EMIB, which are certainly interesting and indeed they would say essential, but I haven't got the first idea whether a change from 55 nanometer bump pitch to 45 to 40 is significant or not till we see the product in action. How can we possibly judge it? It's just part of the specification. It's how they make these things. It was interesting to see them telling us that Meteor Lake with Foveros will have a 36 micron bump pitch, which sounds very small, and a monumental thermal range of 5 to 125 watts. 5 watts with Foveros sounds entirely plausible. 125 watts sounds like a nightmare from the engineering point of view. So when these products come out and we get a chance to judge them, we shall see. I can't decide if it's brave or stupid of Intel to show us a slide about the Ponte Vecchio GPU, which is an example of both EMIB and Foveros, as at the moment they haven't produced the thing. We believe GPU chiplets are coming out of TSMC at the moment, and we're waiting to see the Aurora supercomputer built, shipped, and in action. As things stand, this is just a slide. And then we move on to the slide with continued leadership in advanced packaging with EMIB, Foveros, Foveros Omni, Foveros Direct. The point with these technologies is not just that Intel is making a claim that they can do clever stuff. It's that they can design, fabricate and package processors in the USA or at the very least away from the Far East. So you have the security angle uh, which obviously Intel can claim for their own. At the moment, other companies cannot. And then we come to the closing words from Pat Gelsinger. So continued leadership and packaging, well, perhaps clear path to process performance with a little star leadership in 2025. And that is process performance per watt. Now, the thing is, Intel has been a customer of TSMC for many years. Therefore, clearly, Intel has some insight into TSMC's roadmap. Intel clearly has a relationship with other companies if they know what Samsung is doing. So Intel is capable of making an informed estimate of where those companies will be manufacturing in a number of years time. But of course, the question is, what will Intel be doing in a number of years time? Because Intel's recent record has been absolutely terrible. If they can turn the ship around really quickly and get back on track and keep it there, then absolutely fine. Those roadmaps that we've seen look really impressive, but Intel has to deliver. And now, as they are a foundry, they've got customers to keep happy. So, Amazon Web Services. Intel has signed them up as a packaging client. We don't know what it is they're going to be packaging, but that certainly sounds promising. And then Qualcomm on the 20A process. As to what they'll be manufacturing, how much of Qualcomm's output they'll be manufacturing, we really don't know. Uh, certainly, Intel has burned a number of customers in the recent past. After all, you could argue that the 5G debacle with Huawei uh, was partly at Intel's door. Where, after all, have Ericsson and Nokia been? Thanks to Intel 10 nanometer, they've been in trouble. So customers such as AWS and Qualcomm, they will have approached Intel with their eyes wide open. And we ain't going to know how that's going to work out for some considerable time. So we've seen some impressive claims from Intel. The reasoning is crystal clear as to what Intel is going to deliver over the next few years. Frankly, we haven't got a clue, but they've made some bold claims. Pat Gelsinger has pretty much staked his reputation on delivering on these promises and fair play to him for that. Right now they've got a mountain to climb but hey they're accelerating.